Hey guys, and welcome to the show. So if you're like me, you're always looking for a faster way to do your 3D printing. In a previous video, I addressed inner wall lines and their speed in order to get a faster print. In this video, we're gonna activate a completely different feature in order to speed up your prints as well. So stick around. So we are in Cura. I have a sample brought in already. It's not too big. I print with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. So the layer height, uh, I can go up to 0.4 millimeters, but uh, I usually am down around 0.24, uh, 0.22 or 0.18, depending on what I'm printing. Now, what you're gonna need to do to activate this is go to settings, configure, infill, layer, thickness. So what this is, is a multiplier of your layer height. So 0.18, so let's say another multiplier, um, I'll multiply by 2.36. You could multiply it by three depending on your nozzle size as well. And what this is going to do, so let's first set it back and we'll slice and get some data that we can compare to. Three hours and 10 minutes, 48 grams. And this is for infill, so the infill is an hour and two minutes, 33% of the time. So now what we're going to do is change this to 0.36. So it is a little bit heavier, one gram heavier, two hours and 40 minutes. Look at the time, 35 minutes for infill to print and 22% of the overall time is printing infill. So let's have a look at the preview in order to find out what's going on. So I do have a, a pretty fine layer height looks great from the outside. This should make for a really nice looking print. So the inner walls and outer walls, I have four wall lines here total um, on this particular part, are being printed as they normally would. Where the change is, is that the infill is only being printed on every other layer. So you can see that it is thicker here um, because the thickness is greater, so is the width. And so they're showing it a wider infill as well. As far as structure goes, I'm not sure how this compares, whether it's gonna be um, you know, more solid than an infill that was printed normally. Uh, that I have yet to test, but it certainly is interesting and worthy of some more investigation. Now I do have combing turned on. You can see all these travel lines within the part as well so that the uh, nozzle does not leave the part. So let's take a layer for example, and we'll just run through it. So layer 166, only wall lines. 167, wall lines, infill. 168 should only be wall lines. There it is. So it's skipping every other layer. And as far as impact goes, as long as you have enough wall lines to conceal this thicker infill um, and play around with your settings a little bit, this should work really well. If you're gonna do something like this, change your printing temperature a little bit higher and change your speed down a little bit lower as well. I have the print speed set to 65. Normally I have it set to 75 for the infill. And the reason for that is because we're printing much thicker and taller lines for the infill. We wanna make sure that the material is hot when it's being extruded. Now here's a sample uh, time-lapse that I took, both uh, using Octolapse. And you can see that the result is pretty good. All right guys, so here's the moment of truth. This is a print that I did with no changes to the infill settings for comparison purposes. It's the same filament printed around the same timeline. Um, so let's have a look. Now I've got some pretty harsh lighting so that we can identify any issues. And you can see the layers line up pretty well. There is a bit of an elephant in the room here. This is Octolapse. When it moves off the table, it leaves these strings and I don't have a cooling pen turned on so I think it's accentuating the problem a little bit. It's, um, it, they pop off pretty easily. All right, so this is the print that we've done 
with the new setting for the infill. So we can try and compare. I think there, there are a couple little things that I noticed that I don't remember seeing before. Little tiny bumps here and there. This print has them as well. So I, I don't think I would put that down to this particular setting being turned on. And you can see the same issue here as well. Now one thing about this silver filament, uh, it is ABS. ABS should not be susceptible to moisture. However, whatever ingredient they put in here makes it so that it is highly susceptible to moisture and it will bubble. Um, it will pop and create a really rough surface. So there's a little bit of moisture left in this one. And you can see there's a tiny bit of, um, uh, of this being affected by it. Now here's a print I've done a little while ago. I did not have combing turned on at that point. So there were some little blips here and there. Let's just throw that because it's the same part and the same filament. It didn't have the issue with the moisture that this one does, but uh, obviously it had a, a batch of other issues. So there are some layer alignment issues with this. You know, this is not a top notch quality printer, but it's pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think this is definitely a time saver um, used in combination with some of the other time savers that, um, that we're working on. This could be a really, really good solution to incorporate into that. Well, guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you subscribe and like the video. Take care, everybody. See you on the next one.